What is up YouTube? It is Comic Zealot and in this video I'm going to be talking about my 10 favorite things from the 90s. I was a 90s girl. I was born in 85 so I consider myself to have grown up in the 90s. This list is in no particular order. They were pretty much the first 10 things I could think of fondly from my childhood. So we'll just, we'll just get started. The first best thing about the 90s for me were Tamagotchis. I know that they've come back and you can actually buy original Tamagotchis and it has taken pretty much every ounce of willpower that I have to not buy one because it would be fun for about five minutes and it would sit in a drawer. I loved these things. I had one, I had several. I know I had a dog. I think I had a dog and I had a frog. And of course, I was like in sixth, seventh grade, everyone made fun of the frog Tamagotchi. They said the little baby frog, AKA the tadpole looked like sperm. But I remember carrying this around with me every day at school. I went to a Catholic school where they definitely prohibited having these things in your pocket, especially when you went to church. We went to church every Wednesday, which was just attached to our school. My Tamagotchi went off in a very silent part of mass. It was hungry, that did not go over well. But if you don't really know what Tamagotchis are, they were like these little digital pets and you would get it and it would hatch out of the egg. I think it was kind of like a mystery what you would get. I don't think it was obvious. There was only a couple buttons on it and you had to feed it and you had to clean up its poop. I think you played with it, but that was pretty much it. And then it just grew. But I don't think there was a way to like win. I think you just kind of fed it until it died. I, I mean, I don't really know. I feel like I never saw it to its conclusion if there was a conclusion, but I did love Tamagotchis. So that was number one on my 10 best things of the 90s. Number two was one of the creepiest stuffed animals I've ever owned, but I was obsessed with it and I don't really know why. Number two is a puppy surprise. Now, these things look like demonic now that I look back at them. The fact that they had that plastic face, like that's just really weird. And the concept is weird. They had puppy, I think they had kitty and horse. I think those were the three. And I know I had the dog and my friend Christine, McKay, back in second grade, she had the horse. So you'd buy it at Toys R Us and it was a plush stuffed animal and it had Velcro on the stomach and you open the Velcro to see how many babies you got. That was the surprise. And if you really think about it, that's just kind of gross. Like it's a toy where you're giving it a C-section. The only other thing I really remember about them is that the puppies sometimes had cl eyes closed and my friend and I would pretend they were blind, which is like so offensive and stupid, but I we were eight, so. But Puppy Surprise, I loved it, loved it to death. So that was number two on my list of favorite things from the 90s. Number three gets me kind of riled up because every single person, and I mean every single person I've talked to, including my parents, about this do not remember it at all. And I know that some of my friends have kind of been like, oh yeah, I remember that when I explain it to them, but it's very clear they don't remember this. And it makes me sad because this was literally my favorite drink of the 90s. I remember it fondly and I wish more than anything, some obscure store would have one. I've watched a lot of eBay 90s mystery boxes that people have gotten. And if I knew there was a guaranteed order Orbits in a box, I would be willing to pay some big bucks because I miss these so much. So number three is Orbits. I remember getting them all the time at gas stations. When I went with my dad to fill up, me and my brother would go in the store. My brother was much younger than me. He was probably five or six at the time. I would get an Orbits and he would get a Surge. I used to drink Surge as well. And I remember it being a craze because it was like so much sugar in it. It was basically Mountain Dew, but amped up. I don't really have that much of a desire to get a Surge these days. I know they came back for a while. My brother was really happy and he bought one and he still has the can. Orbits. Orbits were awesome. It was basically a, a clear liquid. I don't know if it was Sprite, kind of a lemon lime flavor, if it was more of just a water. I, I don't really remember that part, but it was the clear liquid and these little jelly things would float around in there and that's what the flavor was. And there was all different flavors and colors. And so it was like bubble tea in a sense. So like you would drink it and the little blobbies had the flavor and it was like, it's hard to describe, but you, you get what I mean. Like it was, it was really cool and different at the time. And I loved Orbits so much. So that definitely made my list for favorite things of the nineties. Number four is a show. And I was a big Nick kid as in Nickelodeon. And you might've seen my Nick box unboxing from a little while ago. If not, go find it on my channel. It's an awesome box. I grew up watching that channel, those shows, cartoons and even their live action shows. I watched them all, I loved them all. My favorite show though, I had to narrow it down. My favorite show was Wild and Crazy Kids. I wanted to be on that show so bad. What it was, was there's a few like older kids, like high school, early college, I bet they were at the time. And there were teams and there's a whole bunch of kids and you just did like the coolest stuff. I don't really remember anything specific, honestly, but that show sticks in my mind. And I just remember how much I wanted to be on that show. This part of my list could be a tribute to all of Nick's shows, like Guts, I loved Guts. I loved What Would You Do? 
Double Dare was okay. I liked it, but if I watch it now, I'm like, oh my God, that is just, the host was so creepy. I liked Clarissa Explains It All a lot. And I've heard that that show is like super weird if you watch it again. I just remember loving it and like wanting to be Clarissa like so bad. But Wild and Crazy Kids is officially number four. And that's the show of the 90s that I miss the most. Number five is a book series. I was a big book nerd, I still am. My favorite book series of the time were Thoroughbred books. I love horseback riding, I still do. I adore horses, I've been riding horses since I was about two. That was when I was on my first horse. I've never been afraid of them. I, I love them. It's the only sport, and equestrian is a sport, it's the only sport that I'm actually good at. And I'm actually really good at it. And I'm just a natural. Unfortunately, horseback riding is a very expensive sport. And like anything, you have to practice weekly, probably, ideally, to get good. And it's too expensive for me to do. I haven't actually taken horseback riding lessons in a very long time. Eight years, seven years, and it's really a sore topic for me. I wish I could afford it. Back then I took them, lessons that is, and these books, I love them so much. They're basically about kids that lived on a farm, which was always my dream. I never lived on a farm. My dad kind of did. He lived in a really small town and my grandpa had horses and stuff like that at times. My dream was to live on a farm and have a horse, my own horse on my own property with my own stable. These kids were living my dream. They were mainly horses that raced, like thoroughbreds, like horse racing. But there were other kids who had horses that did other events, the ones that I liked, like show jumping and stuff like that. And they were just great books. I remember not that long ago, it's kind of embarrassing, but not that long ago, I went maybe five years ago, four years ago, I went to a library and I checked out a couple of these books. I actually reread them. And obviously the reading level is very low and everything, but I still enjoyed them. Number six is a toy that I remember from the 90s that I loved a lot, and they're still around. They're very different, and I had to find the original 1990s era Littlest Pet Shops because they're way cooler than the new ones now. But Littlest Pet Shops were so cool, and each package was basically its own little environment. Like, you could get any, a lot of animals. I don't remember how many I had, but I know I had dogs. I know I had, I think I had cats. I think I had horses. And they all came with like their little home and a couple accessories and stuff like that, like little food bowls and stuff. And I just loved them. They were not as little as like a Polly Pocket. They were much bigger, like the, the figures were much bigger, but I absolutely love playing with those. I took them everywhere. I think even on road trips, I had them with me. Like I love Lowe's Pet Shops. So that made my list of favorite things from the 90s. Number seven is kind of a broad term, but I'm really talking about just two of them. So my seventh favorite thing from the 90s is the birth of what I consider the American boy band. New Kids on the Block were kind of the first boy band, I guess, and they were a little bit before my time. I actually couldn't even name two New Kids on the Block songs. I could name one. In like 1997, 98, that was the birth of Backstreet Boys and NSYNC in the United States. And those two boy bands were my entire life in middle school. I kind of started out as a Backstreet Boys fan because they kind of came around first. And then when NSYNC came around, it was like my heart was torn because you're kind of supposed to only like one or the other. There was all these feuds going on and you had to kind of pick one and I never did. But when I was younger, I would say NSYNC was more my favorite and later in life, Backstreet Boys remains my favorite. I listen to them more. I appreciate their music more, but I still love them both. I only saw Backstreet Boys twice when I was younger and I only saw them one other time after that. In sync, they were short-lived, of course. I saw all their tours but one and my grandma was in town and that's why my mom wouldn't let me go and... I'm still sad about it, to be honest. I will say that last year, a couple months ago, I went on a themed cruise and Joey Fatone was on it because he's kind of, fr he's friends with the guys that are on, that hosted this cruise and he did a lot of stuff on the boat. He sang and things like that. And I actually met Joey several times on that cruise. I was so excited. Like the inner child in me was just freaking out that I met Joey Fatone. And he was the nicest guy too. Of course, my favorite when I was a kid was JC because JC was so adorable, but it was still super awesome to, to meet Joey. Boy bands, primarily Instinct and Backstreet Boys, the birth of them, my love for them, was one of my favorite things of the 90s. I've talked to a lot of people about these in recent history because with the 90s mystery boxes, these have resurfaced and people are sometimes getting them or they're at least talking about them again. And I guess the game was really as simple as it seemed because I feel like I was missing something, but apparently I wasn't. Number seven are pogs. So if you don't know what pogs are, they're basically just little cardboard circular discs that had pictures on one side and were white on the other side. Usually in every pack of Pogs you'd get, you get a slammer, which was either plastic or aluminum or metal or something. And all you would do is you would stack up all your Pogs in like a tower. You would drop the slammer down and you tried to tip over as many as you could. And then those were the ones you kept. That was the whole game. 
That was it. I loved it. Everyone loved it. Pogs were like everywhere. You could buy them in any store. I remember buying at a kiosk in the mall once. I bought, because I was a nerd, I bought ones that had like the 50 states on them. I thought that was so cool. And they like, they came in these metal, or metal, they came in these plastic little canisters. And that's how you kept them all like safe. And I remember getting Pogs for Halloween one year from one of my neighbors. I don't really get them. I still don't get them, but because they were such a craze and because I loved them at the time, Pogs made my list of favorite things from the 90s. Number nine is another book series. I loved Thoroughbred. These came in second. Number nine favorite thing from the 90s are Goosebumps. And I think they kept making them as I grew out of them because at a certain point I stopped reading Goosebumps and I went on to the author's kind of more mature series, which were for teens, which was called Fear Street. But I read so many of them. I read every single one until I kind of got to that point where I thought that they were too simple. They were supposed to be horror books. They always had really cool covers. I loved these books. I didn't like the ones with the ventriloquists, like the like the creepy ventriloquists, because honestly, marionettes and like the, the ventriloquist dummies freak me out to this day. But I loved all these books so much. I read them in lightning speed once I got older. So number nine, Goosebumps. Last but not least, the 10th favorite thing of the 90s for me was my Super Nintendo. It was really my brother's Super Nintendo. We both played it. We had tons of games, some that were just more my brother's speed, but the games that I loved were obviously Super Mario World, Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3, Yoshi's Island, Stunt Race FX, which was a racing game and like the graphics were so basic, it's hard to describe them. And you could only be like three different cars. There's like an SUV looking car and then like an indie car. And I'm not sure what the, the third one was. It was so basic, but I remember playing that game like constantly. Aladdin, Toy Story, The Lion King. Those are all the ones that I can think of off the top of my head that I loved. Now, the Disney games were really hard. I think the furthest I ever got was with The Lion King. I think I might've beaten that game. Aladdin, I could not get very far at all. And I know with Toy Story, that game was really hard too. Those games were amazing. Super Nintendo was definitely a big part of my life in the 90s. That was my 10 favorite things of the 90s. Leave a comment below if you agree with any of those things, especially if you remember what orbits are, because I can't find a single person that remembers those. So comment below if you would like. Thank you for viewing, liking, and subscribing. I appreciate all of my new followers. I've gotten a lot of them in the last couple days, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting me. I do my best to support all of you back if you have an active channel and you have content that I don't find offensive. I want to shout out to, and for my shout out for today, I want shout out to Yvonne Zapata. I don't know how to say your last name and I'm really sorry about that. But Yvonne, thank you so much for interacting with me so much in my videos. It really makes me feel good that you say that I'm calming. That makes me feel great and I'm very touched by that. So thank you. Thank you for supporting my channel from almost the very beginning. I appreciate that and thank you for all your comments and your support. So that's my shout out today to you, Yvonne. So that's it for me right now, guys. Hope you enjoyed and until the next time, peace.